Hi there, Andrew Jackson, AJ Design Studio. Got my second update here on the PS5 controller which I've been modelling. It's been just um, just under a month since I've posted an update on this, like a proper update. Um, I've got to a point where I've got most of the main body sort of uh, blocked out, apart from a few little blends like in the back here, and then sort of edge radii and stuff like that. Uh, so next step would probably be adding small details like buttons, any little gaps along part lines sort of thing. When I last posted a video on here, I was up to this point. So quite a lot of water under the bridge since then, and also I couldn't help but go on and fix some, uh, some other little things, some wrinkles and what have you on some surfaces. So generally surfaces now overall looking a bit better. So back at version 22 here, we were at... 263 features now I'm up to so over here let's have a look we're up to 808 features okay uh, so quite a lot more has gone on to the into this so I've done the uh, added all the black surfaces added these variable little stepped walls that go around on the white uh, parts as well as some extra little walls that go in here um, blocked out the end of the handles um, this blend around the analog sticks which was quite a quite a thing to get to work um, what else have we done oh yeah the little web surface up the front here so I call it the web surface uh, that was kind of tricky because it's slightly inset the racetrack the backlit racetrack and the front buttons okay so let's have a look if we can have a look at the zebra okay so SolidWorks got a little area with the zebra sometimes or it only displays with the poles in your zebra map um there we go now it's, uh, okay see what happens there um okay let's just make this really shiny and turn off the edges and I'll change the background colour and we'll just evaluate the surfaces that way. So I had some issues around the front under here with the surface there was some wrinkling in here I just couldn't get rid of it so I ended up adding like a little tiny surface in here to sort of add a bit of pre-relief before it rolled over into this blend um, which helped. This blend if you watched my previous video, I added this blend on first because I needed the 0.5 radius there to curvature continuous radius to uh, make this big blend out here. Okay, so I sort of fixed that up. Also fixed up, there was some crinkles in the end of the surface here. Kind of like where your fingers roll through. Um, so I fixed that up. Fixed up this uh, form here and then built this central area here the black area with the blend um, which required adding some surfaces that pretty much mainly then were um, chewed away or eroded by adding blends and stuff like that but I needed them to figure out where um, theoretical edges were to run the blend along the racetrack surface the racetrack came after I made this web okay so this is pre pretty much where I was at the end of the last video so I had to flesh out the ends of the handles you can have a look what's going on here create some boundaries and then also trimmed these surfaces back to give me a four side boundary so I could add in these surfaces three of them next step was to add but the little variable edges um, there's a little variable step if you don't have one of these products that runs between the black and the white part so the white part is proud of the black part and that actually varies in size so that was an exercise of going around with the uh, vernier caliper and ruled surfaces and boundary surfaces uh, and trial and error until we got it looking right Okay, so as you can see here, I've added that step surface in. And I need these step surfaces before I added the, the uh, start blocking in the black surfaces. Because otherwise, 
they wouldn't be in the right spot. Okay, now black handle surfaces. They're not black at the moment, they're white. I've coloured them at the end, but these are pretty simple. Um, crown surface here with variable crowning along it. So boundary surfaces. This area around here was kind of tricky because there's a little step, but then that step um, becomes another step on the inside as well. So the edge disappears and then, yeah. So again, quite a bit of trial of error getting this working. So as you can see there, there's this little sliver that disappears. Disappears by this point here. And same on the other side. Disappears. Okay, next up, the corner blend. So this area here. So slowly working our way towards the analog sticks. So corner blend. So the corner blend has a main surface here. Uh, the surface here, this one here, so as you can see there's a bit of trimming going on there, this is an extrude, because on the underside this is an extrude as well, so you can see that that extrude is trimmed back to allow it to start turning, the surface to turn, it's the same here, this is extruded all the way out to here, and then I've trimmed back this area here because if we look in down here, there's quite a lot of curvature change. Okay, it's quite a tricky area because you've got this variable size step and it's pulling in here for ergonomic reasons for your fingers. Um, yep. And then by the time it gets around to here, it's, it meets up with this extruded surface. Next up, analog sticks. Just adding the main bodies. Okay, so revolves. And then the sticks around. Just the main surround that goes around the top. Okay. And again, this is a bit of a tricky area because at the moment you can see here this comes along and then dips in and then it bellies out again by the time it gets to this uh, body that's revolved around the stick. So this all gets chopped out and blended in. Um, again, if you've got one of these in the hand, uh, it is kind of interesting transitions through here. Okay, so sticks around blend. Let's have a look at what we do here. So I'm trying to, as I said before, there's a few surfaces that are, are sort of sacrificial. So this one here is a, a blend. I just wanted to get a theoretical edge, like running down here, because I need to offset on either side to get my um, the blend that runs right around here looking nice. Okay. And also this uh, revolve here. You can't just revolve it and have it meet this edge, obviously. It can touch it in one spot. Um, so I had to trim the revolve back because the surface here has to... Sorry about my spinning the model here. The surface here has to uh, transition from the revolve down to the edge. While looking from above, we've got to try and get this to read like this comes along and slightly bellies out a little bit and then runs into this surfaces around the analog stick okay so i think it's fairly obvious what's going on here this is the big sort of uh pipe trim variable dimension pipe trim that is used to trim out these surfaces before this main blend goes in and if we hide that underneath here's the blend and that's a, a big boundary surface with uh, quite a few sections in it so as you can see there's a section here one two three four five six seven eight so i've got quite a lot of control over that and got some solidworks rippling going on the ends um i went around circles like adding this as a separate patch here uh, etc but i just can't get rid of these little wrinkles in the end so as you can see see here, I've trimmed that out, full side patch, trimmed that out as well. Whoops, so if we turn our curvature on, um, added a, another surface there to get rid of the wrinkle, and then finished that off with another patch there. So lots of surfaces going on. Uh, as I said, there's a surface under here, which basically completely got eroded because it was just used to find out uh, the theoretical edge to run the loft around, okay? Okay, next up, the big button sides. So I'm talking about the big button up here. So that's pretty 
self-explanatory. The trickiest bit there being this corner here, which kind of runs around um, the corner. It's not a it's not a radius. It's a um, patch that on as a surface. Then we've got the front recess surfaces, which is like the web surface in here. This was a, a little area that took me quite a while. Lots of fiddling, um, changing various dimensions, um, comparing the scan against the, the physical product. And in the end, I ended up adding the web surface as a fill surface. Like if we go down to here. Okay, I added that as a fill surface there because I had these really sharp uh, boundaries running tangential, tangentially into each other. And I wasn't really in the space to try and figure this out using four sided patches. So I thought I'll just, I'll just um, use a fill surface to, to resolve that out with our optimised surface on, so that's an overbuilt surface and it trims it back automatically. Okay, translucent band. Again, a bit of fiddling to get this to work. Uh, it looks like it's got a slight crowning on it on the, um, on the physical product. As you can see there, front buttons, right? Front buttons was quite an exercise in um, fiddling around because front here this this obviously revolves around an axis so figuring out where the axis of, axis of revolution for the bottom button was which is there uh, and then trying to get this all working within uh, tapered walls and probably working backwards maybe in reality you'd define the button and then work outwards to, to find the gaps but the gaps are all variable on the real product they're like half a mil on the inside larger on the outside and then larger up the top there so I kind of pieced this together out of these side surfaces and then blend it in between uh, with these so I could control the angle of these surfaces and also the gap and then I had to blend between those surfaces and this revolved surface down here or a swept surface um, but it's pretty much revolved um, yeah so this was this was quite an exercise Okay, as you can see, it's quite a, it's quite a mess, um, a mess of surfaces. I haven't gone through here and tried to rationalise it all too much. We've had a several cracks at this, different ways of doing it. Okay, so I've got to blend in between these side surfaces and the revolved surface here with a blend. So figuring out where to trim those back, and then the front, you know the. Uh, the surface that the user interfaces with, offsetting that backwards, and then figuring out how to hook that around using a surface, uh, two surfaces, and then adding a fillet between them to create a trim there, and splitting that and tidying it all up, and trimming it back into this. So I said there's a blend that needs to go in here that then runs out, because these run, this edge here runs but go deviation analysis that runs down to it's supposed to run down to zero I don't know what's saying that because those are tangent by the time they get to there so yeah that's something I'll do in my next steps next time someone sends me a challenge um, maybe uh, an extruded plug or something might be nice to do or a uh, a revolved body <laughs> anyway um, I'm still sort of reluctant to release this model yet because because there's a lot of stuff in there that's unnamed and probably stuff that isn't needed as you can see yeah so maybe in a month's time i might release it if i get around to adding maybe the d-pad buttons blend under here and add a few little sort of fillets around these around these panels etc cool right that's it for me have a good night thanks for watching andrew jackson aj design studio bye